Hey there, folks. Uh, so, I've got a new Funny Playing LED button kit for the Game Boy Advance SP here. This is the uh, V2.0, as it were. Um, functionally, it should be pretty darn similar to the uh, V1.0, uh, though it does look a little bit different. Um, so, the new one is just using that default yellow orangey polyamide finish for the flex ribbon, whereas they uh, got white uh, flex. Flex is made for the old version. Um, but otherwise, install everything should be pretty much identical. Like the, the, the footprint is the same, uh, the soldering is the same, um, the only real difference is they're, they're using a different microcontroller. I don't know what the reason for that is. Maybe these ones were cheaper and, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's why they did this hardware revision. They just wanted to swap out the microcontroller and, well, they had to redo the PCB for that. Anyway, um, so I did install this last time in an SP. I will go ahead and link that video in the description if you want to take a look at that. But this time around, I'm going to do things a little bit differently because this is going inside of a slate. Um, uh, the, the process for doing this should be pretty much the same for SPs and slates, as well as the compatibility should be pretty much the same between SPs and slates because slate is a uh, SP. Um, Unfortunately, this will not work for BoxyPixel's unhinged GBA SP. Um, reason being, you have to use his buttons with his unhinged, and you kind of want transparent plastic buttons for this, and BoxyPixel's buttons are aluminum. Um, once you solve that hurdle, there's no reason it shouldn't work. Um, similarly, this won't work with Zypher's slab, because that doesn't use SP buttons at all. Uh, that uses Game Boy Pocket buttons, so technically a Game Boy Pocket backlight uh, should work. But anyway, we're starting with a fully assembled, perfectly working slate, and um, see if we can't break it. Um, one thing to note, while the slate itself, the hardware, the physical shell, is a retail version, the backlight kit inside of this thing is not. So, if you're watching this video and you notice any differences, uh, especially the screen in here does not have any shielding over the back, um, don't pay attention to that. That's not a sign of things to come. This was, these these are, there were just prototype kits in these things. Um, I'm hoping it, I'm hoping the kit I think is installed in here is installed. But I don't know, it's been so long. Uh, this particular slate was a uh, retail sample from before, well, not even a sample, like that was, it was the production batch. Um, I don't think we offered this finish though, I think we had them refinished. Or maybe I'm mixing it up with another one, I think I'm mixing it up with another one. Anyway, don't, don't mind that, the hardware is the same, just looks a little bit different. Uh, so slate comes off with five screws on the back. Regular GBA SP is going to be six with that extra screw in the battery compartment. Slate doesn't use that screw. And then once you've got that out, there are three more screws in the motherboard. Exact same as the SP. Oh yeah, we're good. That's exactly what I thought was in there. But I am going to go ahead and remove this just to make it a little bit easier to manipulate. I think this one's one of the tight ones though. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, when I designed the tolerances for this thing, I didn't really account for them painting the um, brass. <laughs> it's 
a, li it's a little tight. Just a little tight. All right, I am going to unplug this from here. Move that over here. And we're gonna go ahead and work on this board. Get my soldering iron booted up. And... This will just install Kind of like that, you gotta make sure that the vias line up, or the uh, the holes in the ribbon here. As you can see right here above the B button, above the A button, there's a ground. VCC down here, start and select. Uh, there's one up here for the brightness button, which we don't use in the slate, but go ahead and solder it anyway, no harm in that. Uh, and then there's one extra point down here that just serves as an anchor. There should be eight in total. Make sure that they are lined up with the copper pads on the SP board itself. And then you can solder it down. Um, it might actually make a lot of sense. Before you solder this thing down, you tin every single one of the pads, but only the pads that you need. Uh, so I'm going to start by tinning the VCC and start and select pads. I think that should make this a little bit easier to align. We're just going to come in here, add a little bit of solder to the vias, or the uh, test pads, excuse me. All right. That way, when we get this on the board, we just center it on the uh, solder balls. Trust me, it, it, it'll, it'll go nice and smooth. I just gotta get them all tinned first. And I have got to lower the temperature, holy cow. I did not realize how high that was until all of my flux burned off almost instantly. Fairly certain it's okay. I was wrong. And that's a weird ground to use, but sure. Okay. Now, when I set this down, I know for sure that all of the pads that I want to hit already have solder on them. So I can be a little bit more confident that um, nothing's going to go terribly wrong. I'm going to go ahead and that one tinned, or uh, tacked rather, this one tacked, that one tacked, Can't remember if I already did that one. I'll do it again. Looked like I already did it. Uh, I didn't do B or A. Want to 
gonna try and keep these as flat as possible so that assembly goes nice and smooth. four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all of them. And that should be it as far as installing this thing goes. Let's double check and see that it works. Ah, 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 ah. Nice. Okay. I'm good with that. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to test this thing without soldering it in. All right. And now, if you're doing a regular SP and you have a regular SP backlight kit, uh, you notice mine, instead of being wired up to that via that we soldered to, you can wire it up to the edge of the board instead. It is quite a bit easier, works great. Trust me. Um, slates, however, are a little bit different in that they use three button controls instead of one button controls. So even though this is soldered up nicely, makes good contact and that is a huge solder ball. I want to use uh, start, I believe, and then L and R. I'm not 100% sure if this kit even supports that. This might be the wrong kit for that. And I don't think any of these have been broken out. Nope. But I can use that little resistor there. Uh, so one of the, the problems I haven't quite worked out with the slate, oh, this does have the shielding on the back. That's unusual. A lot of these prototypes weren't sized. The, the screen assemblies weren't sized properly. Um, and so to make them work, I was removing the shielding, but we didn't want to actually ship that. Um, let's do the buttons now. Um, obviously you can use whatever buttons you want, but it makes the most amount of sense to get some clear buttons. I am using Funny Playing's buttons and membranes for this. Or, I will be. Uh, I neglected to order some to have them, uh, ready. But that's okay. transfer these ones over. Not like I got that much use out of them in this uh, in this console. And because it's a slate, we're going to skip the brightness button. Slates don't have brightness buttons. Uh, I think I want the full set though. Otherwise, I'm going to need that and I'll need to transfer with the shoulder buttons in just a moment. I am trying to think of the easiest way to do this because I don't, I want to, I want to hook up brightness controls. You know, it's, I'm in it, I might as well, because otherwise I will never hook this thing up. <sighs> Give me, is that good enough? I think that's good enough. So 
So this is 100% unnecessary. I am doing it just so that I can have easy brightness controls. Um, actually, I don't think I'm doing it. I don't know if I can solder to these joints by hand. That's a gosh darn shame. I finally met my match. There's very little meat on this. Alright, maybe not. Or maybe so, I guess. Let's double check it and short everything out first. That don't seem right. I think I shorted it. Okay. We'll skip that. Do it later. That's better. Better that than have a uh, short. Um, oh, I should have used select anyhow. That one's on the outside. Yeah, I'm gonna try again. Whatever, you guys know what to expect at this point. I'm not gonna apologize for making a long video. So much easier to hit the one on the outside anyhow. I'm gonna go through all this and then this is gonna be one of the kits that doesn't support brightness controls. That's just weird. I 100% do not recommend doing this. There's no good reason for it. Hopefully, funny playing will just add breakouts someday. Try coming at it from the other side. And now it's not shorted. Ta-da. All right. On this side of things, let's get my spacer, my insulator in there.
See, look at how much cleaner that is by just wrapping it up and around. We don't have to go around the speaker. Ah, oh, it's lovely. Do select. And which one is over here? I thought it was that one. Yeah. Again, 100% unnecessary unless you are installing this in a slate and hooking up slate brightness controls at the exact same time. And then this one is TP8. So this one, the white one is L. I'll do the red one first because that's in the middle. And then the white one. And that's it. We should be 100% good to go. And I should be able to just twist that around and tuck all this nonsense up here. I definitely have to plug this back in though. that nonsense anymore. Never worked proper anyhow. Make sure there's no pinched wires. And I need this to go out the top. Fairly certain I glued those posts in.
How did I lose a screw? I don't go anywhere. Oh. I found it. Never mind. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Let me kill all my uh, overhead lights. Be able to see it even better. Uh huh? Uh huh? Oh. Interesting. It's like my uh, L button is shorted out or something. Uh, let's get this. Hopefully this has my button tester on it. Oh, yeah, it does appear that my L is shorted down. I must have done that on assembling. Um, rest seem to be working all right. You know what, this is my first time using the uh, funny playing buttons with a slate, and I gotta say, I'm not sure I recommend them. Which is really unfortunate. They get stuck exceptionally easy. Shoulder buttons too. This one doesn't feel right. It feels almost like the um, the the nubbin worked its way out while I was assembling it. It's still very clearly working, but I don't know. Hate to see it. That's unfortunate, but I guess it is what it is. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at some of the features here. So the button controls are a little bit different, I believe. I don't actually remember what they were for the other one. Um, but you press and hold A and B for three seconds and you should be able to toggle between the modes. Now we've got that uh, cute little animation, as it were. Uh, which one is this? Select A and B, enter single LED selection mode. Oh, I gotcha, okay. So hold select and then B to decrease brightness, hold select and A to increase brightness. Uh, let's find out where off is and then I can figure out what mode I'm in. Okay, so that was loop color LED according to their flow chart. Um, which select A and B controls brightness, yep. And then this should be off. Um, and it does save the setting. I like that it starts off too. Uh, and then we hit A and B for three seconds. We should switch over to breathing mode. Huh? 
okay. Um, there's nothing noted for that. I'm guessing it just cycles through the colors. Increasing brightness and decreasing brightness. Switch color, increase brightness, decrease brightness, switch color, increase brightness, decrease brightness, switch color. And then hold A and B for three seconds again. And we will enter multicolor mode. Um, and then select A and B should enter, ah, oh, single LED mode. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Select bumps us through the LEDs. Oh, that's so cool though. Uh, and then we can change color by holding A or B. Oh, that's cool. So you could set up your own quadrants for the D-pad if you want. Um, that's probably a lot of effort, but sure. Oh, and then the one we're missing is for, um, the brightness button, because you can't see that in the slate. But, eh, uh, eh, uh, how cool is that? I don't have anything in mind as far as what, uh... Oh, and then start should change all the colors, I thought it said. Start and select appear to do the same thing, cycling through, so I don't know about that. Oh, we have to hold start for three seconds to change them all. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and I think that's about it as far as the controls and features go, and then just select A and B to exit the mode. else flashing on me. Okay. Um, if you're having a similarly unfortunate experience as far as I am with your slate and your buttons are sticking, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the fix is. Um, other buttons work, I can tell you that much, but I don't know that, I don't know how many are making clear buttons besides funny playing, so that's kind of unfortunate. I think breaking the edges on the inside of the button wells of the shell itself, uh, you know, skate across it with a file real quick, I think that should solve the issue because it feels like it's just getting caught on the edge. Um, it feels like the, the tolerances on these buttons are just a little bit different. Unfortunate. I'm sorry guys, had I had these buttons when I was designing this, I would have made sure they worked. But I think that's about it. I think that's all I've got. Um, so thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to check out. I will go ahead and link that stuff in the description. I will also link the uh, old one that uh, the, the video on the older one that I did as well. Um, unfortunately, I did run into some issues with that one. Um, I don't know if my particular kit was defective or what's going on, but every time, like it, it, it was acting like the start or select button was being held down. So every time I hit B, the brightness of the whole kit would go down. And every time I hit A, the brightness of the whole kit would go up, which it's kind of silly because, like, how are you supposed to use the Game Boy without doing that? Whatever. Um, this one doesn't seem to be doing that. Let me get a game here. And try playing through, despite my sticky buttons. Whoop. I like that animation. It's cute.
have the other one. Funny Playing's uh, Game Boy Advance motherboards, the replacement ones, have that same animation on startup with their LEDs. I think it, I think it's pretty neat. This is going to be interesting to play with the sticky buttons, but I'll make it work. That wasn't sticky buttons, that's just me being bad at this game. <gasps> oh no, oh no! I messed up. I don't know, it seems fine. Oh! Also, the more I play it, the more these buttons will probably break in. I'm sorry, you probably couldn't see the screen at all. Let's do that. Huh? Same darn Goombas. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not having the same problems I had last time. I'm having different problems, of course. But I think that's related to my specific medium. Um, I'd like to try this out in other shells, but also I'd just like to get my hands on a second set of buttons. I remember when I did the original video on this kit um, in that blue SP shell, I had comments on the buttons then, too. They, they felt kind of off. It was fine, but they were off. And now that I'm actually playing games right now, they're fine. Yeah, you saw I was doing the testing earlier in my start and select but oop, button, and I think up button were getting stuck. Of course, up doesn't matter in Mario. Oh, oh, no. And, of course, I'm not hitting start and select. But, I don't know. It is fine. Like, you can hear I'm not getting stuck right now. Yeah, so maybe it's just a matter of them breaking in. I don't know. Um... It certainly requires more investigation, uh, but the, the the kit itself is pretty nice. I got no uh, no qualms aside from I really wish um, Funny Playing would break out the select L and R touch well select touchpad for um, slate stuff. Nice to have, it's definitely not necessary though. Oh, no! I don't know. Seems pretty good, though. I like it. If nothing else, this is one of the uh, SPs that I keep on display um, because of who I am as a person. Um, but also because I'm just proud of the thing that I made um, and having the cool, flashy buttons is uh, only going to add to the display, I think. Um, so, I'm, I'm still happy with that, even making it, whoa. I did not know that was a thing. And I have no idea what this menu does. This is not an English game, is it? No, it is not. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. That's fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, the video's done. I'm just playing games now. 
This is that sapphire that I fixed a while back. Oh! I'm trapped. Unless I want to surf, and I don't. Oh, there aren't multiple pages. I'm trying to do this. Okay. Yeah, I, I need to stop this nonsense. Um, otherwise, I'll keep playing for hours. All right. So that's about all I've got. Um, like I said, Retro Game Repair Shop did send this to me to check out, um, you know, give them my opinion on. And to be frank, I'm into it. I like it. Uh, the kit itself is only 25 bucks on RGRS right now at the very least. Um, but do keep in mind that you also want to get the transparent button membranes and you also almost definitely want transparent buttons. Um, otherwise, you know, what's the point of something like this? Uh, there is a, another vendor out there that makes these, um, glow in the dark pads, which I think should also work just fine. You can see they're, they're passing quite a bit of light through them. Um, even on top through the other buttons and pads. Um, they feel kind of soft though. Like if you've ever played an SP with these, it, it feels off. They're fine, but they feel off. Um, also, these are definitely not funny playing buttons, but they will definitely work. Same deal. Uh, I just didn't want to use them because they're, they're pink. I, I didn't want pink buttons in my brass slate. Nothing against pink buttons, I just didn't want them in my brass one. Um, install's pretty easy. I mean, it was... Most of the time... Cons the most time-consuming part of that install was me doing stuff that's totally irrelevant to this whole video anyway. Me hooking up brightness controls for my backlight kit that aren't even working properly because my... L button keeps getting stuck but I don't know I'm just gonna swap these back in and call it a day I think um, otherwise that's all I've got links in the description other video if you want to check it out on uh, this bad boy I think I did the backlight kit at the exact same time so it's also a longer one like this but at least that one has an excuse right anyway catch you all next time thanks for watching